Barnaby Jones, a Quinn Martin production, starring Buddy Ebsen. Also starring Lee Merriweather, Mark Shera, with guest stars Susan Day, Nancy Olson, Roger Perry, special guest star Pernell Roberts. Tonight's episode, Testament of Power. This ought to do it. Well, there we are. They'll never know this was touched. Very efficient, Mr. Layton. Thank you. It's a good thing you didn't hire one of those young punks. They need help to open a can of beer. Oh, Porter, uh, show the gentleman out. Remember, Mr. Matthews, if you need me, I'll be around. Matthews, did you have to hire an ex-convict? Well, it was the best I could do on such short notice. Sorry he didn't have a college degree. Try another file. After 20 years, don't you think I know where Bradley kept his personal papers? Corporate reports, debt on mergers, land acquisitions, tax statements. It's a waste of time. The will must be there. Now, I did what you told me to. Bradley sent the will over yesterday, and I destroyed it. Now, what happens if the original turns up? You know, for an expensive lawyer, you panic too easily. There's only one person who knows where the original will is. Who's that? Margaret Jason. Well, it's good to see you again after all these years, Margaret. You remember Glenn Ryan, uh, Mr. Bradley's lawyer? Hello. Uh -huh. Mr. Matthews, you said Mr. Bradley wanted to see me. It was important. Now, where is he? Well, there's something else we'd like to discuss with you first, Margaret. Uh, Richard Cohen, Bradley's will. Why ask me about that? That's something you should discuss with Mr. Bradley. Is something the matter? I, I know he's been ill. Rising a few degrees tomorrow with light smog in the basin. Recapping the hour's top story, Richard Corwin Bradley, one of America's richest men died tonight at the age of 52 oh, no. aboard his private plane en route to London for medical treatment. Bradley, whose personal fortune has been estimated at $500 million, had no close relatives, and there's considerable speculation as to who will inherit. He was still so young. Such a wonderful man. Yes. I'm sure you had every reason to think so. According to the report uh, from our security men, you, uh, you saw a great deal of Mr. Bradley these past weeks. Yes, he, he knew he was ill. He just wanted to talk to an old friend. Very touching. Uh, how do you account for the time that he uh, spent at your secretarial agency Friday night? I don't see that's any of your business. We spent a few minutes at my office at the most. The report says two hours. Just enough time to uh, type up a new will, wouldn't you say? I don't know anything about a will. Mr. Matthews, you got me here to see Richard Bradley. Now, if you'll have your man take me back to my... Margaret, house. you are not going anywhere until we see that will. You can't hold me here. See that she doesn't leave the grounds. <laughs> Oh, my God. 
this happen? Well, it was an accident. It was nobody's fault. She behaved very foolishly. Porter! Make sure the accident didn't happen here. Want to be, you know, I checked the police report on Mrs. Jason. And it said that she committed suicide by jumping out of her office window. As simple as that. What's there to investigate? Well, Betty says that Linda, her daughter, is pretty upset. The least I can do is talk to her. But what about the Grand Prix qualifying trials in Ontario? We'll never make it. The drivers will just have to make it on their own. Oh, good. I'm glad you're here. Come on in. Linda's out back. She's calmed down a bit. At least I hope so. What is so important about Margaret Jason? Well, Mrs. Jason used to supply temporary office help for Barnaby when I was on vacation. Yeah, but if she's just an acquaintance, why are we going through all the trouble of... Thank you so much for coming, Mr. Jones. This is my associate, Jedediah Romano Jones. Hi. Just call me JR. <gasps> How do you do? Well, would you like to sit down? Thank you. I hate to bother you, Mr. Jones, but the police just won't listen to me. They think that I'm some kind of a silly, hysterical kid. Police are usually very sensible about things like that. On Sunday night, when I went over to my girlfriend's house to study, my mother was relaxing in the living room. She was wearing a robe. She didn't just go get dressed up, and then walk over to the office building two hours later and kill herself for no reason. Honey, sometimes there are reasons we just can't see. If I could just find that man that she was seeing, well, he might know something. What man, Linda? About three weeks ago, my mother began receiving phone calls from a man. And when I answered the phone, he would not give me his name. And then no matter what time it was, she would just go rushing out to see him. Maybe she found somebody she liked? She was never serious about any other man. My father died about the same time that I was born. He was the only man that she ever talked about. Did you ever uh, ask your mother any questions about this man who kept calling up? Yes. But every time I brought it up, she either got nervous or she changed the subject. Did you ever get a look at him? No, but I tried. Last Friday, he drove up in the same black limousine, but he just sat in the back. He wouldn't get out. It was almost as if he was afraid to be seen. Well, that man could have killed my mother. Linda. Isn't it possible that your mother could have fallen in love with a married man? Then maybe he tried to break it off. She became despondent. You knew my mother, Mr. Jones. She wouldn't kill herself. Oh, please, you've just got to help me. <laughs> All right, Linda, but in the meantime, I don't want to hear about you just sitting around moping. You know, this garden could stand a lot of work. Those glads over there are positively rickety. I know. I promised my mother that I would replant them. I haven't gotten around to it. 
I've always found a great deal of therapeutic value in puttering around the garden. Start puttering. Thank you, Betty. Don't worry, darling. We'll be in touch. Day and night. Mr. Ryan, when the Bradley will was probated this morning, the estate was merely listed as in excess of a million dollars. Now, I wonder if you and Mr. Matthews as executors can give us an exact figure. Isn't it closer to 500 million? The law does not require a specific amount. Well, that will was written in 1958, sir. That's a long time ago. His fortune must have multiplied at least 10 times since then. Didn't he make any later provision? There is no other will that we know about. Now, if you'll just clear the gates... Uh, so, gentlemen, uh, gentlemen, the bulk of the Bradley estate will go to charity. Since he was confident we would carry out his last wishes, there was no need for a later will. Well, didn't the judge raise that same point in court? And he accepted the same explanation, uh, with better grace, I might add. I hope that answers most of your questions. Uh, if you get out of the way, please. Uh, all right, let's go. Come on, on out. I think there's a question. Now, that'll be all, gentlemen. Thank you. moment there, I thought that you were going to lose your temper with the reporters. Did you like those questions? I've learned how to handle the press. You just convince them that you're telling them a lot and you say nothing. Well, I wish I could take this as calmly as you are. I was the one who destroyed the copy of the will, remember? Well, not out of any favor to me. According to the old will, we are co-executors. And with the right bookkeeping, we should do very, very well. Not if the original turns up. Well, Margaret Jason typed the will last Friday, which means that she didn't have a chance to get to a bank or a safe deposit vault before her unfortunate suicide Sunday night. Well, then where is it? Well, give me a little time. I'll find it. Miss Jason, sorry about the delay in returning your mother's belongings. Police procedure takes time. I understand. Mr. Jones, I don't care what you want with them. I just can't. I'll look after her. That girl's having a rough time, Barnaby. Why don't you tell her the truth? I will, as soon as I find out what it is. I wonder if I could take this stuff with me and run it through my lab. What do you think you're going to find? Our lab didn't. Well, I want to take a look at this mud. She only had to walk a couple of blocks through Beverly Hills to get to her office. I wonder where she got all that mud. No, oh, it could be a hundred reasons. She might have picked it up gardening. Pretty fancy shoe for gardening. All right, so she walked across a lawn that had just been watered. And maybe she picked that mud up on the street. Maybe. If I find anything, I'll uh, give you a call. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry I made such a scene. When I saw her clothes, I just couldn't help it. Don't be silly. That would be rough on anybody. Come on. Jay, oh, you're so sweet. Giving up your time like this. Well, it's part of the job. What I meant was thank you.
doing a fine security force, Porter. They're wonderfully inefficient. The men didn't have time to find the will. They covered the front rooms all right, but then the Jason girl came home with that young detective. Why don't we wait a few days, then I'll send the men over there again to finish the job. No, I, I have another way of handling it. In the meantime, have someone keep an eye on the house. Yes? Yes, yes, uh, of course, I remember you. Uh-huh. Oh, well, now, uh, 10,000 is a lot of money. Well, it seems reasonable for me not to speak to the authorities. I mean, somebody else would hold you up. Oh, now you have nothing to tell the authorities, Mr. Layton. Uh, I think they'd be real interested. Richard Cohen, Bradley's right-hand man, and his attorney hire a safecracker to open the Bradley vault before the body's even called? Couldn't wait a couple extra days to open it legally. Well, now, there were business reasons for that. Oh, sure, sure. That's why you hired me, an ex-con. You think anybody would believe you? You want to bet they give me immunity? Look, Mr. Matthews, you're wasting my time. Unless you want me to shoot my face off, huh? All right. Where do you want me to take the money? Well, just to make sure there's no setup, I'll uh, call Mr. Ryan on the phone and tell him where to bring the money, all right? All right. I'll uh, contact Mr. Ryan. Are you crazy? Paying blackmail to an ex-convict? You know he's not going to stop at 10,000. We have no other choice, unless you prefer prison. Well, I'm not an errand boy. You deliver the money. Oh, no. He asked for you. You heard him. Look, Matthews, it wasn't my idea to open the vault and destroy the copy of the will. And if I have to, I'll say so in court. Nobody sold you anything. You saw the will. Bradley cut us both off without a cent. He didn't even trust us to be executors. I'll take my chances. And in case you forgot, you also helped cover the death of Margaret Jason. Now, let's go get our friend some money, hmm? You know... When an ex-convict starts calling the tune, I think it's time we take a look at things. No matter what. Mr. Ryan is going to deliver some money to Harry Layton. Take care of Layton. And, uh... See what Mr. Ryan is taken care of, too? Mrs. Jason's dress. Beautiful. I've never seen anything like it. Yeah, I don't think many people have. Stymophilon affine. A vine grown in the jungles of Brazil and the West Indies. Banned for importation into the United States. But I don't know how Margaret Jason could have caught a petal from a flower like this in her dress uh, walking down the street in Beverly Hills unless she went by way of Brazil. Barnaby, how about this? Suppose she died someplace else and then was taken to her office building and made to look as if she had jumped there. Betty, you're developing a very fine, suspicious mind. Thanks to you. But you know, we don't know much about Margaret Jason. Except that she was a nice woman, reliable. I want you to go down to the courthouse or the Hall of Records, any place you have to go and find out everything you can about her. All right. 
Any calls for me while I was out? Nothing, Miss Thompson. What is Mr. Jones doing in there? Oh, he said he was working for Linda Jason and that he had to go through the books. Well, I thought it would be all right. Here. Mr. Jones, may I help you? Miss Thelma, I don't want to step on anybody's toes, but there are certain things that I had to find out about Mrs. Jason since Linda asked me to look into her mother's death. Poor Margaret. I suppose I was her very best friend. But I don't understand what that has to do with the agency's books. And I don't understand how she could maintain such a big house in Beverly Hills with uh, such a small agency. Well, things are a, a bit slow right now, but we do very well, and we have a very fine reputation. There's a check here. Ken Ray Corporation for $3,000, signed by uh, Glendon P. Ryan. Oh, yes. I haven't had a chance to deposit these checks since Margaret's death. If I remember correctly, uh, he is one of the executors of the Bradley estate, along with a fellow named Matthews. He had a lot of other clients as well, big Hollywood stars. But I, I don't understand what you're getting at. These ledgers, which go back uh, five years, indicate that these checks for $3,000 came in regularly every month. Were they all signed by Mr. Ryan? Oh, yes. He had a great deal of confidence in Margaret. I should think so. It's a lot of money for a secretarial work, uh, part-time. Well, I, I always thought that they had some special arrangement. Did Margaret have a personal relationship with Mr. Ryan? Mr. Jones. I know what you're thinking, but I absolutely refuse to believe it. Margaret Jason was a wonderful woman. Her personal life was absolutely impeccable. If you want to start some horrible rumor, I... Thelma, I'm not trying to hurt Margaret. I'm trying to help her daughter. It's the last payment. Sure, sure. Wait a minute, let me check this out. It's the whole 10,000. I don't want to waste my time with you. as soon as possible. Well, Barnaby, you want to tell me what you're doing here? I've been trying to get a word with Glenn Ryan. Last time I called the secretary, she said she had just heard about this. But your answer's from Ryan. I thought you were working on the Jason suicide case. I am, but i uh, got a couple of questions I want to ask Ryan. Too bad a mugging got in your way. Mugging? For the moment, that's what I'm calling it. See, Leighton had a record a mile long. Now, he could have lured Ryan up here, tried to rob him. They struggled for the gun. Layton got shot, but he managed to kill Ryan, then he collapsed. Yeah, that's one theory, but uh, what do you really think? Well, Layton served time, all right, but it was for safe cracking, not armed robbery. But I mean, why pick on Ryan? Prominent attorney, he managed the Bradley estate. Layton must have told him a pretty good story to get him up here to be mugged. There's got to be some connection between them. You got any ideas? No, but uh, when I do, I'll communicate with you. Oh. I uh, got your message in exchange. Why did I have to drive all the way out here? I have someone I want you to meet. 
I just came from the Hall of Records. Margaret Jason was not married when she gave birth to Linda. Oh? She had been divorced from Ted Jason two years. Well, maybe they reconcile after the divorce. Uh, some couples do that, you know, without getting remarried. Well, I thought of that, so I checked with the Air Force. Ted Jason's co-pilot runs an air charter service here. Uh -huh. okay. <laughs> Well, listen, there's several things I'd like to show you. This, uh, this little number here, this twin-engine push-pull, it's a real beauty. Handles easier than a compact car. Well, Mr. Hutchins... Cap. That's what everybody calls me. Well, Cap, uh, we don't have to be in the market for uh, buying a new plane today, uh, but uh, my secretary tells me that you used to know Ted Jason. Ted? Oh, I sure did. We flew over 20 missions together in Korea. We were together at Kelly Field when he crashed. Never were two guys any closer. Do you happen to recall whether he started seeing his wife again after the divorce? Margaret? Never mentioned her name. No, I'm wrong. I think he did once. He said how lucky he was he got off without paying any alimony. He, Margaret got this good paying job. She was, she was working as a secretary to that big millionaire, the one who just died. What was his name? Richard Corwin Bradley. That was about 20 years ago. And he never returned to Los Angeles. What for? He was going with another girl. They were going to get married. Then he died in a crash. Thank you very much. You've been a big help. Uh, say, I don't only just sell planes. If you'd be interested in flying lessons sometime. If I ever get the bug, I'll be back to see you. He was talking to me. Oh. This is ridiculous. I don't know anything about gardening. You can learn. Please. I promised my mother I'd replant glands. Look, in the neighborhood in Chicago where I come from, flowers just don't grow. Something you see in store windows, you know. JR, I don't know what I'm going to do with you. Linda! Thelma, I'm so glad you're home. I've been sitting at my office worrying about you. Thelma, you're such a dear. You're so pale and so drawn. I should have been checking up on you long ago. <gasps> oh, I didn't realize you had company. Yeah, come on. Thelma Thompson, this is J.R. Jones. Hi, how are you? Hello. Thelma was my mother's closest friend. She practically ran the secretarial service. And as far as I'm concerned, you can keep on running it for as long as you want. Oh, thank you, dear. Well, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to barge in on anything. <laughs> Don't be silly. J.R. is a relative of Mr. Jones. He's also his associate. I've asked them to investigate Mom's death. Oh, so I understand. Uh, Mr. Jones was in the office this afternoon, poking around things. Linda, are you sure you're doing the right thing? Positive. There have been a lot of strange things going on. Earlier today, two men broke into the house. Well, they were searching for something when J.R. and I surprised them. Oh, no! But you can't possibly stay here while things like that are going on. Why don't you come to my house? Stay with me a few days. I really couldn't do that. It's okay. Uh, I'll keep an eye on it. But what about at night? I, I mean, you, you shouldn't be alone. Oh, I'm sorry. There I go again, putting my foot in it. It's okay. I was going to stay on the couch anyway. Well, I was just thinking about appearances. Um, Linda, look, I've offered to do what I can, but uh, if you would prefer... Maybe Thelma's right. You've done more than enough already. All right, all right, if it'll make you feel better. Look, why don't I toss a few things in a bag and come right back here? That way you wouldn't have to close up anything. It would be no trouble. Well, if it wouldn't be too much of a bother, I'll be back in no time. Thank you. Goodbye. It's not that I don't trust you, JR. I know, I know. You just don't trust yourself with me around. Oh, sure, because you're just so irresistible. <laughs> no, I'm tickling! <laughs> Come on. Help me fix 
up in the guest room for Thelma. And nothing's too good for good old Thelma. I can talk to you, Mr. Matthews. Mr. Matthews, not seeing anyone. Tell him I'm the detective on the Margaret Jason case. I think it'd be better if I talked to him than to the newspapers. Wait right here. I don't know what to tell you. Um, Mrs. Jason was his personal secretary, but it was so long ago, we uh, lost track of her. Margaret Jason was receiving these checks for $3,000 a month until the day she died. It's not possible. They were all drawn on the Ken Ray Corporation. According to the Commissioner of Corporations, that's a uh, wholly owned Bradley company. Well, those checks never came to my attention. They were all signed by the attorney for the corporation, Glenn Ryan. Unfortunately, I was unable to speak with Mr. Ryan. That's poor Glenn. It doesn't seem possible. I never knew much about Glenn Ryan's personal life. So I uh, suppose it's possible that he had been having an affair with Mrs. Jason and uh, using corporate funds to pay her off. According to the bank records, uh, went on over 19 years. Now, Mr. Bradley was one of the world's shrewdest businessmen. I suppose this fact could have escaped him? <laughs> well, now, uh, Mr. Bradley had many interests. Isn't it possible these payments were made for Mr. Bradley himself? That's ridiculous. What for? Well, uh, maybe he was having an affair with Margaret Jason. Richard Corwin Bradley did not have casual affairs with secretaries. I didn't say casual. 19 years, that comes to a lot of money. Mr. Jones, if Glenn Ryan was dishonest, that's unfortunate. I have nothing more to tell you. Thank you. I'll find my way out over the drawbridge. Shall I do something about him? Oh, he's just guessing. Sir, I don't think he's just... Mr. Matthews. What's he doing? I don't know. I don't like it. He's working for the Jason girl. Suppose he finds the will. Well, if he does, it'll be his last act on this earth. Mr. Jones, are you saying that my mother had a secret lover? All I said was, after the divorce, it's possible that your mother may have fallen in love with another man. All those years, she was lying to me? Maybe she was trying to protect you. Linda, your mother took a job as a private secretary with Richard Bradley. A year later, she quit. According to the hospital records, she was pregnant. Now, ever since then, the company has been paying all her expenses. Mr. Jones, are you positive? The company checks have been coming in as recently as last week. Do you think the man that was seen, my mother, was Richard Bradley? He was a very sick man. He could have turned to someone he trusted. Why would he wait 18 years? Because it's a lie. How can you tell her things like that? Miss Thompson, somebody broke into this house because they were afraid that she could prove a claim to the Bradley estate. That's the only possible reason. I worked with Margaret for over 10 years. We had no secrets. And I never once heard her mention the name of Richard Bradley. Linda's had enough trouble. Can't you let her keep some decent memories of her mother? Mr. Jones, I think it'd be better if you would leave. Linda, you hired us to help you. J.R., please. Very well. Linda, your mother was a wonderful human being. 
You mustn't listen to stories like that. But why would Mr. Jones want to lie to me? I don't know. Maybe he's after some quick money in, in some nuisance suit against the Bradley estate. All I know is that I can't bear to hear those terrible things said about your mother. Oh, no, look, please, don't get upset. I can't help it. i better go and make some dinner. Oh, Linda, I'm so sorry you had to listen to all that. Everything's working out just fine, Mr. Matthews. Is the detective gone? Yes. Now I'll have plenty of time to look for the will. Oh, it's gorgeous. Isn't oh, it? I wish I could find someone like that. <laughs> I'm so excited. Look at is, it. Is uh, Miss Thompson in? No, she. We haven't seen her all day today. Well, uh... We have to check something in Mrs. Jason's office. Please, Mr. Jones, I got into such trouble last time. Oh, it's okay. Uh, Barnaby squared everything away with, with, um, with Miss Thompson. Okay. <sighs> check the tape recorder. Barnaby, you really think we're going to find a will here? Margaret was up here typing for two hours. If that was Bradley with her, I doubt if he was dictating personal correspondence. Tape recorder's no good, there's no cassette. Let me check the file. This thing is too worn to read. Well, there's nothing in here but some bills, payroll records, and correspondence. Hey. Listen to this. This document supersedes all previous wills. Down here, I leave to my dear friend, Margaret Jason, and my hitherto unacknowledged daughter. Linda's Bradley's daughter. This is a proof. We gotta get that will. Call Linda. Right. Busy. I searched all the rear rooms. There's no trace of the will. Well, you'll have to go through the house again. I know it has to be there. Is the girl around? Well, I, I might have a little time. She's working in the garden. playing the glads. Well, what is it? Richard Bradley's will. I'll just read you the important part. I, Richard Corwin Bradley, leave to my dear friend, Margaret Chasen, and to my hitherto unacknowledged daughter, Linda, the bulk of my entire fortune, apart from charitable... Be I just can't believe this. My mother never said anything. She never said anything to me, and we couldn't have been closer. Oh, Linda. <laughs> for you. It's crazy. Well, I better phone Mr. Mr. Jones and, and JR right away. Oh, Linda, don't track that garden dirt all over the house. Go ahead and change. I'll call Mr. Jones. <laughs> I really am a mess. Well, tell him to hurry. Mr. Matthew, 
news? The girl has found the will. It was buried in the garden. I don't get it. First, the line's busy, then there's nobody home, now it's busy again. Let's get over there. Where's the girl? She's in the bedroom. Thelma, is that Mr. Jones? Get the door. Oh, I thought that it was... Miss Jason, would you give me the will, please? Thelma, what is this? Give Mr. Matthews the will. Miss Jason, we don't want to hurt you. You were my mother's friend. I'm sorry, but it won't be convenient for you to be around. No! Oh, no, sir! No! No! Message with the exchange where there's nobody home? It's the same white van. We are being followed. Lose them. Jones, he has the will. I think I better file this. Oh, Linda, it is absolutely beautiful. If only my mother... Hey, hey, you sure you're not going to get lost in all these rooms now, huh? <gasps> it is awfully big, isn't it? And it's so formal inside. Well, just keep in mind that in case you want to make any changes, uh, you'll be able to. Looks like you have company. I'm sorry. I wanted to spend the afternoon with you, but the lawyers are here to discuss the probate. Well, we'll do it another time. Is that a promise? Sure. OK. Gentlemen, madam, I'm so glad that you could come. I'm Linda Jason Bradley. Uh, looks like she was born to it. Isn't that what we just finished proving? What's the matter, J.R.? Is she suddenly too rich for your blood? Yep. Because, of course, uh, Barnaby could give me a raise. What do you say, boss? Huh? Listen, Jedediah, I just don't get too rich for my blood. 